Hello, I'm going to talk about synchronous socket programming. Now let's take a look at my samples here. I'm going to put these on my web page so that you can download them and look at them. So I'm just going to send some text to the server. And when the client's not connected yet, it's just going to say listening for connections on port 3333. And when it does connect, it'll say client connected, waiting for data. And I can disconnect my client and reconnect it which is kind of important even if your server can only handle a single client connection like this one. Let's go over the server see what it is. So I've got two sockets defined, the server socket and the client socket. Then I've got my constant port number, 3333. You don't want to be able to change this. And then you've got your buffer. And here I'm starting up the client with the server to make things easier for myself. Then I've got the start server method and the start listening method. The start listening method is going to just listen for data. It's not actually listening for connections. So I probably shouldn't have named it that because it's kind of ambiguous. Then I've got console read line. So if any exceptions occur and the loops are exited and the top two methods, then the program is not going to close immediately and then I've got server socket closed. So if the program's closed uh, because it crashed or because the user explicitly typed exit, then we're actually going to just explicitly close the server. And this is not going to be called when you actually press the exit button on the console. I don't really know how to handle that, but it's not really a big deal. Here is the start server method. So we're doing a typical construction of the server socket. We're going to use internetwork being um, IPv4 address family. And then, if you, then you've got the uh, socket type stream and protocol type TCP, of course. This is a typical uh, constructor. Okay, and then we're going to bind our server socket on any local network inter interface. Then we're going to listen with a, with a backlog 10, and that means we can have 10 uh, connection queues lined up to, you know, ready to be connected. I don't think it's the actual amount of clients that can be connected to the server. I will do some experimenting on this in future videos. I did watch another video where a guy implied that this was actually the maximum amount of connections to the server. I, I, I didn't really believe this. So you've got client socket is equal to server socket except so this is a blocking method here it's going to block the thread it's on and it's going to return a client socket the socket that that uh, shakes hands with the server after that we can start receiving data so client connected waiting for data and we're going to create our buffer here now that we have our client socket assigned to we're just going to use receive buffer size doesn't really matter it's a simple program so here's a while loop. So while client socket connected, we want to receive data into our buffer here at index zero with the buffer length, socket legs none. And uh, this method is going to return the amount of bytes received, actually received, not including like the entire buffer, because that would be pointless. Um, so if if I break this here. We could just type in like a good seven characters or so, and received will be six. It's not going to be 8,100, whatever the actual size of the, the buffer. And there is, I think there's a simpler overload for this that's the same thing as what I'm doing. I think that's actually equivalent to what I've just put in there. Yeah, it must be. Okay, so if received is equal to zero, then we're going to assume that the client's disconnected and break out of the while loop. And after that, we're going to receive, resize our buffer. We're actually going to resize the actual buffer itself, not bother copying it to a different buffer. It's just the way I did it. And we're going to resize it with the um, amount of data received. And then we're going to get string using encoding ASCII get string buffer. And I prefer to use ASCII over default because if you, I think that if you use default, 
you're using encoding that is specific to the operating system that the server is running on or the client and we don't want that we want it to be consistent throughout the client and the in the server so I'm using ASCII and we're going to convert this byte array to a string and then we're going to resize our our buffer back to something a bit more appropriate so that we can further receive uh, data and then we're going to write our message to the console down here we I'm handling the socket exception so in the, when a socket exception occurs then that just means that the client has implicitly disconnected I couldn't really handle it properly I tried it I tried it for a while to work around this uh, I couldn't really and so I'm just gonna say listening again and then we're gonna start listening for new connections uh, once more so that we can reconnect and then we've got client connected and waiting for data so after this is unblocked here after this completes we're gonna assume that a client has connected then we're gonna start listening for data again from that client and if any other exception occurs we just want to write a normal exception message so let's go over to client and take a look at that so we've got our, our socket our client socket and in the main method the first thing that we're going to do is call create socket and this is kind of a silly method um, so I'm just going to try to create this socket here I, th there's an exception that can occur here a socket exception I've never actually had it occur when constructing a socket I think if you just get your um, your arguments mixed up or something incorrect in the constructor here it will raise an exception so I don't think it's really necessary for me to put it in its own method and its own try catch here okay so here I'm connecting the client to the loopback address and I was going to adjust it so that this address was you like you know the user input but I guess not so I might as well just do this IP address loopback and here is a while true loop I'm just just waiting for user input and if input is equal to exit then we're just going to close the socket and I exit the application otherwise we're just going to send it to the client socket on the other end and that's it see you later